Hello. Welcome to the Just the Dis channel. My name is Brian. Today we're going to talk about 80s comedies. As will maybe become apparent uh, as we go with this channel, I like 80s comedies a lot. And uh, so I just picked a handful here of my personal favorites. I'm not saying these are the best. And when I say personal favorites, I don't mean necessarily all-time favorites, uh, but movies that I enjoy and watch with some frequency. Let me start with probably the highest on the list and one of my all-time favorite movies, Three O'Clock High from 1987, directed by one Phil Juanu, uh protege to Mr. Steven Spielberg, a, a guy who did a student film that I think Spielberg saw and that got him this gig and or it was something like that. Um, but a really great 80s comedy, uh, basically high noon in high school. You have a young man named uh, <laughs> Jerry Mitchell, played by Casey Shamasco. There he is there. Um, who runs afoul of the new kid who is played by... Uh, What's his name? Richard Tyson. Uh, and the new kid's name is Buddy Ravel. He's a very notorious uh, bully and a guy who seems to have some kind of a track record with, like, stabbing teachers. And there's a great opening shot to this movie that follows a bunch of different students in, like, a, a steady cam type thing as they all tell different rumors about Buddy Ravel and how dangerous he is. Uh, and basically on the first day that he's there, Jerry, who uh, works with the school paper, is assigned to do an introductory piece on Buddy Ravel. And he decides that meeting Buddy in the men's bathroom is the time to bring this up. He's wrong. It's not. And their exchange leads <laughs> to Buddy challenging Jerry to a fight at three o'clock. Uh, in the parking lot. And so Jerry has the rest of the day to try and figure out how he's going to deal with that. And there's a lot of hijinks, let's say. Um, but it is such a blast of a movie. So stylishly shot with the help of Barry Sonnenfeld on camera. Sonnenfeld, of course, before he directed, worked with the Coen brothers on such films as Raising Arizona. So if you think about the frenetic camera work in that movie, you have some idea of what things are like in this. Although it's even more, I mean, it's not quite as wild, uh, but there's a lot of great, you know, overhead shots and cool, you know, the, the film tends to emulate clocks, you know, and, and have a lot of moments with clocks and camera moves that kind of remind you of a clock. Um, but it's just a lot of fun. It's got a great supporting cast, including uh, Anne Ryan, uh, Jeffrey Tambor, Philip Baker Hall, and John P. Ryan, who has easily the greatest line in the movie uh, at the end. Um, you'll know which line I mean when you get to it. Um, but Casey Shamasco just plays a great every kid, and it's just one of my favorites. It's one I've seen so many times because I've tried to show it to so many people. Um, and I've never, it's not I've never failed, but the movie has never failed to impress or at least, um, you know, cause enjoyment for anyone that I've shown it to. It's that kind of movie. It's just 100% a, a blast. It's a great time. Uh, and this Blu-ray was so welcome. It has an audio commentary with Phil Juanu and an interview with him and interviews with the screenwriters. Uh and the costume designer. I mean, sadly, they didn't talk to Jerry Mitchell himself, but there's a lot of great stuff here. I was so, so happy with uh, Shout Factory when they put this out. Pick this up if you don't have it. Blind buy it. Next up, I talk about this movie a lot because I love it a lot, and that's Modern Girls from 1986. Stars a trio of ladies played by, uh, let's see here, Virginia Madsen, Daphne Zuniga, and Cynthia Gibb. They play three girls in their 20s living together in an apartment in Los Angeles, working kind of dead-end jobs or, you know, jobs that may not be the careers they want. 
and they have chosen to really focus on the nightlife. They're in their prime years of doing that, you know, hanging out in clubs and not paying for drinks. And so that's what they're up to. And one night, <laughs> uh, a certain, you know, nerdy dude played by Clayton Rohner, who I've talked about before, just one of the guys, April Fool's Day, I'm Mad Man. Uh, he shows up at the door seemingly for a date with Virginia Madsen's character. Uh, he met her at a pet shop. He's a driving instructor. Um, and to his chagrin, she's not there. Also to the chagrin of Cynthia Gibb and Daphne Zuniga, she's taken the car. So they have to sweet talk Clayton Runner's character into giving them a ride into the city to meet her. And they have a nice little adventure that, uh, among other things, involves a British rock star by the name of Bruno X, who is also played by Clayton Rohner uh, in a great dual performance. Um, but it's a really uh, great, you know, uh, one crazy night comedy, which is a subgenre that I love. And uh, it's also got some sort of pathos to it. You know, there's emotion to it. It's It's got... I don't know. There's just something really sympathetic about these characters. And the more I watch it, the more I love it. Uh, it's truly become one that I put on at least a couple times a year. It's a comfort food movie, if you will. But it's really, really enjoyable. Um, this says an interview with Clayton Rohner. This disc is from Kino. Uh, that's a fun interview. Uh, but, you know, just a, a little gem for me. Modern Girls. Next up, I have uh, one that I saw at a drive-in theater in 1986. This is Armed and Dangerous from uh, director Mark L. Lester, who would go on to do things like Class of 1984, actually he did that before this, and Commando, and uh, I'm trying to think, Bobby Joe and the Outlaw. He did a wild variety of stuff, that Mark L. Lester. But uh, this is one of his funniest comedies, uh, due to it starring John Candy and Eugene Levy. Um, it also has a really great supporting cast. Um, Meg Ryan, very young. Robert Loja, Kenneth McMillan, Brian James. Uh, screenplay by Harold Ramis as one of the co-writers. So that's kind of cool. Uh, basically, it is a story that center centers around a disgraced cop played by Candy who gets set up by some other dirty cops to take the fall for them and what they're doing. And he ends up out of a job and looking for work as a security guard at a company called Guard Dog Security. And uh, I really want a Guard Dog Security t-shirt, by the way. Somebody make that happen. Um, but uh, he encounters a terrible lawyer played by Eugene Levy, who we get to see being really bad in court and basically being pushed out of his profession uh, into the security guard realm. But um, uh, Meg Ryan's dad is Kenneth McMillan, and he owns Guard Dog. And so John Candy, being the cop that he is, notices that there might be some weird stuff going on at Guard Dog with the places they're dealing with and their union. And so he starts to investigate, and it becomes kind of a comedy thriller. Uh, but it is a lot of fun. Oh, Steve Railsback is also in this movie uh, towards the end. Um, but yeah, it's really one of my favorite John Candy movies and one that I don't feel like, uh, is as popular as Uncle Buck, for instance. And, uh, it should be, uh, there's also a, a quick reference to it on the Netflix show Love, I think in the second season. And I already liked that show a lot, but it completely won me over when it makes reference to Armed and Dangerous. So anyway... Uh, very fun uh, thriller comedy. Next up, little Goldblum double vibes. Okay. So this one, uh, psychic comedy. I'll take it out of its slip. Put your hands on our hands and feel the vibes. A psychic comedy that's out of its mind. Um, so this is a goofy one, but one that I like with Goldblum, uh, and Cindy Lauper. They play psychics. Jeff Goldblum is a psychic who can touch things and sort of figure out where they've been. If it's a murder weapon, he can picture the murder, um, 
and it's it's more of a curse than a blessing his uh, powers and Cindy Lauper's character is a psychic who has a ghost friend that can tell her things uh, basically anything and everything she wants to know about people um, so they encounter each other at I feel like some kind of a scientific experiment thing like a university run uh, thing where they bring in a bunch of psychics and uh, she basically tells him, you know, his fiance is cheating on him. And so that doesn't establish her well as someone that he likes, but they do end up getting hired by the same wacky Peter Falk to go down to South America on this weird mission. This movie is strange. I, I can't deny that. Um, and they sort of start to get along and Cindy Lauper's very good. And, uh, she's got a song in the movie that I like very much, um, Hole in My Heart, I think it's called, and um, I don't know, I've just always been a fan of this one, it's not high quality cinema, but it's something that is, again, sort of a comfort food movie for me, so vibes, good stuff, and more Goldblum, Transylvania 65000, this one is from 85, and um, it stars Goldblum and one Ed Bagley Jr. doing, uh, you know, Hope and Crosby kind of thing. You know, definitely a comic duo that never was that I wish had been kind of thing because they're very funny together. Uh, they play two reporters who are sent by their boss of this very low-level newspaper. Um, their boss is Norman Fell. Uh, to investigate a video of, I think, a Sasquatch in Transylvania and they end up going there and running into you know some spooky people and uh, it's a lot of fun it's very much in the vein of uh, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein and uh, has a really good supporting cast including Joseph Bologna Gina Davis Jeffrey Jones Carol Kane Michael Richards he's very funny and very physical in this movie in terms of his wackiness uh, Donald Gibb from Revenge of the Nerds um, goofy and like feels out of time in a way. It feels like an older comedy somehow, but still has an eighties vibe to it. I don't know. I was just happy to see this get a Blu-ray. Um, it's just an old, you know, VHS gem I used to dig. Uh, this has an audio commentary with writer, director, Rudy DeLuca and visual consultant, Steve Haberman, uh, which is a nice compliment and gives some backstory that I liked to hear. But again, I really wish Bagley Jr. And, and Goldblum had done more comedies. It would have been fun. And lastly, a little lesser seen one here. This came out from Olive, uh, the Whoopie Boys with Mark Rodri uh, I'm sorry, Paul Rodriguez and Michael O'Keefe. Um, and basically, I'm going to read the back here. Of this one, uh, a New York street peddling, sorry, New York street peddling isn't all it's cracked up to be, which explains why Jake Bateman, Michael O'Keefe, and Barney Benar. Paul Rodriguez uh, head for the warmer climbs of Palm Beach in search of quick cash, girls, and fun. Cupid's arrow strikes when Jake meets the girl of his dreams, the beautiful Olivia. Olivia is a socialite with problems of her own. If within 30 days she's unable, unable to find a suitable husband, someone cultured and well-bred, she will lose her inheritance along with the orphanage she operates to a real estate developer, the snide Strobe, who happens to to be her ex-boyfriend uh with pressure from both the still infatuated strobe as well as her uncle olivia's options are running out could a crash course in manners and etiquette turn the <laughs> turn jake into suitable husband material joining a ragtag bunch of potential sophisticates at a charm school run by one henrietta phelps uh might just be well the charm and so begins the madcap merriment in the farcical whoopee boys so this one pairs well with caddyshack and that there's definitely a snobs versus slobs vibe going on here and you've got michael o'keefe again um and he and paul rodriguez are very good together they are an equally interesting comic duo and uh this charm school business plays out very funny in that sort of 80s raunchy comedy kind of way. Uh, and Eddie Deason shows up, which is always a plus. I'm trying to remember if there's any other um, 
cast members that stood out to me that I remembered. I, I feel like there's some familiar faces, but um, I'm blanking. So anyway, <laughs> this one is fun. Uh, not as well talked about as some of the other ones I've mentioned, but I discover. I, I want to say for me, it was a discovery when this Blu-ray came out, which was uh, a few years back now. Um, but I definitely had seen the VHS cover and it had always stood out as something that looked interesting, but it, uh, it impressed me more than I expected. And that is again, not to say that it's high class comedy. Clearly it's angling not to be, but, uh, it works for me and, um, good times are had. So that is it for the first round of eighties comedies. Uh, that I'm talking about, but I will definitely come back to this topic again. I have a lot to say about 80s comedies. I have a whole 80s section of Blu-rays uh, that I go through, and a lot of them are comedies. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, leave your comments about your favorite, uh, un maybe underappreciated 80s comedies below. I'd love to hear it. Thank you. Bye-bye.